I am uh, Bryce Beamer, and um, I come from a background in uh, industrial design and also in uh, interactive prototyping. And um, I've been working with Adidas for about two years. Um, in addition to that, I teach as an adjunct professor at Philadelphia University. And um, I also own my own studio um, that does some industrial design and prototyping as well. Um, but uh, today I'm going to be talking to you guys about some work that I've done with Adidas and some of the things that I've kind of learned along the way. Um, like I said, I've been at Adidas for about two years and I was hired because um, I'm a maker and a builder. And um, uh, as I imagine a lot of you guys are coming from that same kind of background, um, there's an approach that you take to prototyping and, um, and some of those skills are really great uh, as far as bringing um, products to market. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about where that's an advantage and, and some of the problems that we've, uh, we've run into along the way. Um, so the, uh, my coach elite team system is something that we've been working on. I've been, like I said, two years, but the project's gone on much longer than that. And it's a system that allows um, coaches, players, um, and trainers to look at their players' performance and become faster, stronger, and smarter. So the goals that we had in this was, first of all, um, to make the, the system very easy to use and so that um, the players and trainers could then work on iPads and directly see the actual results of the data that we were providing. Um, so it helps pe trainers uh, track the total training impact. Um, it provides uh, you know, accurate, real-time insights to the performance on the field. Um, and right now, I think that we are leading the market um, in providing that, uh, that uh, performance. So just to give you an idea, this is a uh, promotional video uh, that we use for the team system to give you an idea of what's, what's involved. So um, obviously that video has a lot of really cool music, but um, <laughs> I'd also kind of like to share um, what is going on inside the system. And so uh, the goals here, uh, we're tracking position, we're tracking speed and distance, uh, we're tracking heart rate, um, and we're tracking acceleration and deceleration. De so derived from that, we also get power, relative power, efficiency, and training impact. And the system consists of a couple different devices. So basically, on the left, you'll see what we call the TechFit Elite Shirt. And this garment is designed to assist in taking the heart rate as well as holding um, the player cell in position on, the play on each of the players. So above, you'll see the player cell. Each player has one of these um, mounted in their garment. Um, then we have the base station. And the base station is used um, to process all the data from the pods. Um, and then uh, share that data with each of the um, iPads and also to our web server. And a little bit further ex explanation on, on how that works. Um, each of the pods um, uses uh, an RF signal to, uh, to send the data to the base station. The base station um, uses some of our uh, custom algorithms to then take that massive amount of data and really um, turn it into something that the, uh, the coaches and trainers can understand. So we use uh, colors as well as um, zones to, um, to, show the, um, to show the trainers relative performance between players who have different athletic um, uh, metrics. 
And then also, sorry, I forgot about the uh, central web. This is all then synced to the web so that, um, so that the trainers can look at changes over time. They can run the same drill practice after practice and look at the overall performance of the player over time. So it's a huge advantage um, in training. And this is kind of a close up on the um, TechFit Elite shirt. Um, like I said, the, um, the Elite shirt provides uh, some core functionality to the entire system. It serves as the compression base layer. It serves as a scaffold for um, the heart rate harness and um, it allows you to reduce the noise uh, and, um, and get a real clear signal um, from, uh, from the player's heart rate. Uh, we also have uh, the way that the shirt is engineered, it allows the pod to stay in place, which um, is kind of a key bit as far as using the uh, accelerometer data from, uh, from the pod. And with this system, the core goals here are able to create those usable metrics out of these mountains of data and educate and inform the coach and improve the players. Um, in addition, we'd also like to use this data to then engage fans. Um, and so I guess in, in producing uh, this product, um, just like in a, in a good prototype, um, a manufactured smart textile, one of the primary keys is the functionality. Um, the consumer uh, would expect a prototype to work once, twice, maybe a week or two. Um, but when we start to look at consumer garments, they're looking for the long-term life of the garment. Um, in addition to that function, um, you're looking for robustness. Can it be donned and doffed? Um, and, uh, and can it be used in the wear and tear of a normal um, athlete? Uh, we also have uh, repeatability. We use we test these shirts um, to perform on the athlete through um, through their exercise sessions, but then we also uh, test that through wash cycles. Um, and last of all is the fit, and this is one of the toughest things that we run into because athletes come in all shapes and sizes, and even somebody who is determined to be a medium. Um, can have all different types of body shapes. And so that's one of the key problems that we have, especially when working with um, heart rate sensors, getting the proper location, and also um, maintaining that close body contact that's required for our compression garments. Um, now, this is uh, kind of interesting. Here it says improv, that's not improve. Uh, my boss uh, made sure to, uh, to check that out today. Um, what I mean by improv is um, when you're working in an area like smart textiles, you're really kind of shooting from the hip in a lot of ways. Um, manufacturers aren't used to producing things like the things you all will be creating. Um, and it's not predictable in many ways, and there are some inherent risks along the way. Um, you'll notice Nobody makes the part you need. So we often find ourselves um, looking for components that might be used in different industries for completely different purposes. And we go to vendors and we say, oh, could we have you know, a couple hundred of these, but could you make them out of this? And are you willing to coat them in this magic sauce that we have? And so um, for our manufacturing partners, we always look for somebody that says yes and, which is one of the key things that people look for in improv comedy. And so that's why I have improv here, is because we're really looking for manufacturing and development partners that say, not only can we provide the thing that you're looking for, but can we also go one step further and kind of uh, uh, achieve a further goal with you. Um, the, nope, sorry guys. Sorry, <laughs> the two-finger swipe. Um, the, the interactive concept development um, is, is taking a look at um, how you work together um, with your team. And so we're looking at a variety of different specialties in producing a system like this. Um, so when we're working on, from the garment perspective, it's important to have close ties with our electronics team to make sure that we're developing in a path that makes sense together. Um, 
we also tend to develop in parallel paths. So um, when we see strength in a solution, we don't then go full bore necessarily on one direction. We often take multiple paths because when you're working in an innovative area such as smart textiles, you often hit walls along the way. And so although you may have started with five plans, hopefully you end up with, uh, with one that works there at the end. Um, the last thing we, we, we try to do is link in with the other team members as soon as possible. And what this allows you to do is start to find those issues of compatibility between, say, the electronics team and the, um, and the, the garment team, as well as the software and, and firmware folks. And so the sooner you can get these prototypes made, um, the sooner they can start to flush out some of their ideas as well. This is the original prototype shirt um, that, they, that had, uh, my team had been working on when I arrived at Adidas. And um, basically, this shirt um, has heart rate sensors on the chest, um, and it uses an existing model of um, uh, the Adidas TechFit garment series. And it has been retrofitted with what we call a uh, wiggle wire harness. And it actually uses a, um, uh, a shielded wire and wiggles up around the neck to the pod location on the back. And so that where, that's where the pod would be located. And And this is the, uh, this is the final product. You'll see that um, we still have the heart rate sensors. They actually, um, the sensor wraps around and routes up the back of the shirt to the pod. And the pod, I can show you uh, here. snaps in place and it's just that's the player pod